Nike shoes were originally shoes for runners and they were quite successful in carrying out their role. But as a company that continues to develop, Nike also tries to get into other sports. In their development, this company was struggling. In the 80s, their market even started being taken over by Reebok. Nike then looked for a market where the customers were very enthusiastic about the shoes. Then they found their target market, teenagers aged 16 and over. Their way to enter the target market is by participating in the competition in the basketball arena. And the majority come from black people. However, in the basketball arena, Nike is still behind Converse and Adidas. Therefore, they needed an icon to elevate the status of their shoes, and it was Michael Jordan. In the early 80s, black people in America were still not fully upgraded. But in the current decade, they already have someone who has become a president. Those years are still identical with poverty and criminality. Teenagers start looking for an idol that they can make as role models. But worse, in that year, Ronald Reagan came to power. This person concentrates more on encouraging the privatization of the business sector, rather than on social program. Poor black people are being neglected and the economic gap is increasingly felt. These conditions make it easier for drug dealers to enter these circles. In 86, America actually had a rookie that was even better than Michael Jordan and his name is Len Bias. Actually, at that time, Bias joined the Boston Celtics club as the second pick in the NBA draft. Two days after draft day, Bias was found dead from a cocaine overdose. As a form of opposition to drugs, the NBA is collaborating with the LA Lakers club whose members have turned into rappers to campaign for the anti-drug movement. The Chicago Bulls are a new club that entered the NBA circle. This club was founded in 1967. In its development, this club has only become an ordinary club. In fact, the presence of this club was never anticipated, and their management was very bad. It was a profile of a pathetic sports club. In 1984, there was no fuss when the Chicago Bulls picked Michael Jordan to join. While still a student, Jordan was already player of the year twice, but he was not seen as the best player in the league. This is different from Len Bias who is so dominating. However, that view changed slightly when Michael Jordan became the star of the American Olympic team in 1984 where their club won the gold medal. However, because the opponents they faced were considered easy, these achievements did not make the public view Michael Jordan as a champion athlete except for a talent scout from Nike company, Sonny Vaccaro. Previously, Sonny Vaccaro was used to going to schools to find students who had talent in playing basketball. But actually, he also went to the coaches so he would order the athletes to wear shoes from their company. Maybe because he was used to watching truly talented players, Sonny was able to see the greatness and potential in Michael Jordan. You could say that the currently happening Air Jordan culture was created by Sonny Vaccaro and Rob Strasser. Rob Strasser is the head of marketing for the Nike company. When talking about the most collectible and most valuable Air Jordan shoes, maybe it's the collection owned by Sonny Vaccaro. As a tribute to the man who had convinced him to sign for Nike, Jordan awarded Sonny Vaccaro with a broken shoe that he wore in the NBA Finals in 1991 when the Chicago Bulls first won and beat the LA Lakers. At that time, Michael Jordan's big toe was so swollen that his shoes had to be torn off so as not to put too much pressure on his big toe. But with a swollen big toe and broken shoes, Michael Jordan managed to beat the LA Lakers. Sonny convinced Nike to spend all of the budget on just one athlete, Michael Jordan. Actually, from the videos that were shown, it shows that Michael Jordan was actually a true user of Adidas. Even when playing in a club sponsored by Converse during practice, Michael Jordan still wore Adidas shoes. One thing that made Jordan interested in turning to Nike was the program they had prepared for him. Nike didn't let Jordan become number four under the Converse legends. They had their own program to wrap their shoe products according to Michael Jordan's character. In basketball, this was the first time this had been done by a company. Because before, companies always wrapped the product display in the overall team view. Julius Irving, Magic Johnson, and Larry Bird wore the same shoes as those worn by their teammates. Julius Irving was the first superstar to become an iconic basketball shoe. The man who became the coolest basketball athlete the first time was Clyde Frazier. Apart from shoes, Clyde displays the image of basketball athletes as a whole, that they also have the potential to appear in today's style. But in the case of Michael Jordan, the person is not too cool, but the shoes are arguably the coolest products. Michael Jordan was actually used by Nike as a weapon for their marketing strategy. From a revenue target of $3 million, these shoes managed to earn many times over. Of all the large amounts of money spent by Nike to the success of the Jordan project, what is considered very significant is the $1 million budget issued by the company to push promotional and advertising matters. The very first is the naming Air Jordan. Even though this name is actually too similar to the name of the Jordanian state airline, but the shoes must be named after Air Jordan because it really describes the character of Michael Jordan who always elevates in the air. Michael Jordan himself initially didn't like it if the shoes were red, because the red color represents the color of the devil. 
but it can't be helped because his team is also red, so Jordan finally gave up. These shoes were first worn by Jordan in New York at a game. It immediately caught the attention of the teenage fans who were amazed by the shoes used by this player. Apparently, the shoes were also noticed by David Stern, chairman of the NBA. From then on, he immediately banned the use of these shoes for official matches. This was the first time worn by Jordan in New York City on a farm which immediately attracted the attention of the sexiest teenage fans with the shoes worn by this player. Also for David Stern, the chairman of the NBA, who immediately banned the use of these shoes for official matches. David Stern imposed a fine if the shoes were worn on official matches, which were then followed by Nike. They were willing to bear all the fines imposed on Jordan. This NBA action actually helped Air Jordan's publicity in public because they became curious. But the kids give off the impression of rebellion, a value that is very cool and liked by them. The reputation of Air Jordan shoes is increasingly stylish on the streets. Foot Locker, the largest retail shoe store in America, initially only ordered 5,000 pairs, but one week later they ordered another 150,000 pairs. For this success, Rob Strasser, Nike's marketing, sent his official thanks to David Stern. Then David Stern replied with a request that Nike give him just one pair for his child. About one million pairs of Air Jordans were sold out by fans in its first year. Unlike the first Air Jordan, whose production was a bit rushed to meet deadlines, the second version of the Air Jordan, which was released in 1986, was designed to be much more mature and with a more elegant concept. The design was sleeker and was made in Italy without displaying the Nike logos. Nike confidently charges double the price compared to the first version of Air Jordan. In this second version, Nike emphasized more on the Air Jordan logo, the jump man, taken from Jordan's silhouette jumping in the air. The promotion of the second version of Air Jordan is more dominated by the image side through advertisements that are different from the previous ones. In 1986, there was a movie gig that was a bit odd, named Spike Lee. He released a film debut entitled She's Gotta Have It. In this film, it tells of a character named Mars Blackman who is fighting over a woman named Nola. When Mars finally had the chance to be alone with Nola, Mars still wore his pride at Air Jordan in bed. Mars did not want to take off his shoes even though he was forced by the woman of his dreams. Spike ends up being recruited by Nike to make an Air Jordan ad series with Mars Blackman as the character. The content from this ad didn't show an athlete who is sweating, but it showed how valuable these shoes are, more than the importance of a girl he is desperately chasing. Air Jordan is placed in a position of social status. Converse ads are too direct to show achievements, but Nike ads are unique because the images are black and white and also show more of the unique side of the athlete, Michael Jordan with his slam dunk style. The message was not conveyed immediately, but it hit teenagers who want to look cool. The Air Jordan advertisement was worked on by Spike Lee until the fifth version. In total, there were 90 advertisements that were worked on and all hit the target market. One of the ads features a science professor explaining Michael Jordan's jump with the theory of gravity in a humorous style. It was very fun for a sports shoe advertisement, but instead it was unique and also relatable to the viewers. It was these advertisements that brought Nike's image into the realm of pop culture. In the next film entitled Do the Right Thing, Spike Lee returned to display Air Jordan in a scene. In this scene, a character in the film is angry because his neighbor accidentally stepped on his Air Jordan shoe. This character then goes to his neighbor. When he's mad, the character doesn't say, you ruined my shoe, but instead says, you ruined my Jordan. Air Jordan is a character in itself, not just a shoe. Because of this Air Jordan advertisement, Michael Jordan was displayed everywhere. In products not related to sports, he also appeared in commercials for cereal products, hot dogs, hair care products, and others, which later contributed to the name of these products. The standard advertising model which previously had to always be a white man, handsome and cool, has now been successfully broken by Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan proved that he can be included in any product and can be accepted by both blacks and whites in America. Apart from that, Michael Jordan's reputation also appeared brilliantly in the NBA. In 1988, at the time Air Jordan version 3 was released, was the year of the highest personal achievement of Michael Jordan. He won an MVP of the year, highest scorer, defensive player of the year, and all-star MVP. However, he failed to reach the MVP Finals title because at that time, the Chicago Bulls team still could not reach the Finals. Michael Jordan's achievements are highly correlated with the image of the shoes he wears. This made people wonder if he was so good because of his shoes. And when Michael Jordan finally succeeded in bringing the Chicago Bulls to a championship in 1991, people became increasingly convinced that it was because of his shoes. In the 90s, when the Chicago Bulls began to consistently win titles, Air Jordan sales also increased and gained an absolute position as the lucky shoe to win. 
American children dream of wanting to be like Jordan in every way, from the achievement, appearance, and wealth. Later, this inspired the Gatorade advertising slogan that read, I want to be like Mike. One way that can be done to be like Mike is to wear the same shoes that are worn by Mike, namely Air Jordan. The position of Air Jordan shoes is getting higher and admired by American children. That status was strengthened by the wearing of Air Jordan as the official uniform of American rappers. Air Jordan does not only represent athlete standards, but it's a cool standard for everyday appearance. In the opening title of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air series, the wardrobe used by Will Smith is brightly colored clothes and the fifth version of Air Jordan shoes. Twenty years later, Air Jordan's price is getting more expensive because of its status as a collector's item. The first version of the Air Jordan is still being produced, but the quality is different. The old version that is produced now is then called the retro version. Because of that, old items eventually go up in class to become a rare collection. A man from Detroit City dared to claim that he is the largest collector of Air Jordan in the world. At his home, he keeps about 1,175 pairs of Air Jordan shoes. This man not only buys shoes that fit his size, he also buys other sizes. His interest started when he saw the first Air Jordan, which was the start of the next 1,000 pairs. Apart from shoes, this man also collects other memorabilia items such as Michael Jordan action figures and weedy cereal boxes. He bought nine boxes and until now has never been opened. All of these collections are estimated worth $1 million. And this man has not yet planned to stop hunting. People who like to collect Air Jordans are not only in America, but also all over the world. A girl from Tokyo, instead of shopping for bags and high heels, she prefers to collect Air Jordan. Then, a man from Paris, he bought dozens of Air Jordans, but none of them he uses. For him, Air Jordan is not just a shoe, but a very valuable display item. Air Jordan's fame among hangout kids in the end has a negative side. Violence and robbery have occurred as a result of a pair of shoes labeled Air Jordan. There was a kid who was beaten until he was helpless just because of the Air Jordan he was wearing. This phenomenon began to boom when it was picked up by Sports Illustrated magazine in 1989. The article raised a case of murder that befell a 15-year-old boy who was committed by his 17-year-old basketball playing friend. This tragedy occurred only because the perpetrator was jealous of seeing the Air Jordan shoes that were being worn by the victim. Only because of a pair of shoes, it takes someone's life. The marketing strategy used by Nike was then blamed for this. Nike releases its products in limited quantities and they release the product again a week later. This created cues and the hangout teenagers competed with each other to get it. Brilliant idea but raises a negative side. Some people even fought at the location of the coup and some others then sold it at three times the price. A case occurred when a man who just came out of the store managed to get an Air Jordan. The man's name was Joshua Woods. He was followed by four people, who then attacked him and killed him right when he just arrived in front of the house. Nothing was missing from the house. The robber only took a pair of Air Jordan shoes that the owner had just bought. In America, this incident was a scene. As a token of his sympathy, Michael Jordan then sent Air Jordan shoes in lime green, which had never been released before. Joshua's fiance received the gift, so like it or not, she always wore these shoes before Air Jordan officially released this lime green version of the shoe. But he was afraid that he would be killed in the middle of the road. The impact of this case, Nike was asked to change the way it sells, not by brainwashing with promos, so that American children go crazy, but only a few of them put it on the market. Nike and Michael Jordan have never commented on this. Maybe they didn't do it on purpose, because this has been the case since the release of the first Air Jordan. Goods run out quickly and can only be supplied again some time later. This condition in America is still a concern because the crime is still happening and Nike has yet to give a response. We still don't know how it goes, will Air Jordan's reputation still be cool or will it even be downgraded because of the cases that have occurred? I hope bad things don't happen to Air Jordan fans here.